What up, IDS Mob? So this isn't my normal setup. I'm about to have a really big, busy day, and I didn't have time to set up my camera and stuff because I'm using it to film stuff. But I got a question in that I thought warranted an answer, so I'm using my phone. So uh, this guy has a question he left in response to my video, three reasons she'll gladly risk losing you with a pull-away test. So I guess this means this woman's pulling away from him. And so the question he asked me was, she asked me to move in, and she was really excited about it. So I got excited about the idea, but as soon as I started talking about moving my stuff over and it got real, I noticed she has pulled away. I sold my house and have to be out by the end of the month. So I've been moving kind of fast. I should probably just talk to her about it. So I asked him the question, how long were you two dating prior to talking about moving in with each other? And his response was, we have been dating for like a month, but we reconnected from a previous relationship. So we knew each other around four years ago. So it isn't a new relationship. I know it's fast, but I sold my house and she was super excited. So I got on board. I'm going to just see her face to face and ask her if she's having second thoughts. She got distant in just the last couple days when I wanted to bring some of my kitchen stuff over. If you have other advice, I'm all ears. So I was trying to look up any specific episodes I did about this topic, but I've, ta I've mentioned it several times in some of my shows where I fundamentally do not believe that you need to be living with somebody before you get married to them. I think, uh, and I've actually, I was looking up some research about uh, the link between cohabitation and um, how long a relationship will last. And overwhelmingly, there are several studies that they've done that have shown that uh, cohabitation can actually help improve a couple staying together in the first year of marriage, but then it can also cause the downfall in later years. So basically what that means is that living together doesn't actually bond and glue you guys close enough together to where it's going to last. And more often than not, couples that cohabitate before they're married uh, tend to break up. And uh, there are several theories about that, but basically you can't practice a relationship for one. And for two, like it's one of those things where if it doesn't work out, you as a guy are trapped. It'd be different if like you guys were already married and you live together because there's paperwork that says you can stay in the house and that you guys both own the property and that's something that has to be discussed in court. But then while that's happening, you could technically stay at your house or apartment with her and she couldn't kick you out. So you still have a place to stay. But this moving in before you get married to somebody, what can happen is like this guy, you guys decide to live together and then she has second thoughts. Well, unfortunately, you guys aren't married. So let's say you guys get a place where it's in her name or whatever. Now it's like you can get kicked out and no harm, no foul, right? Uh, but more importantly, like I said, you can't practice a relationship. You can't practice marriage. I think guys oftentimes agree to this because they're thinking, well, again, if I'm around her all the time and we're living together, it means it's really super serious and it's already leading towards that, that path of marriage. But I've done also shows where I talk about how sometimes women will suggest that you two do things that are actually to the detriment of her attraction for you. And this is one of those things. You guys have been together a month. Yes, I know you said you dated in the past for four years, but you guys had plenty of time apart. This is in essence a new relationship. And so what that means is that you're starting from ground zero, sort of. You're starting from ground zero in a sense that you haven't been together for a bit of amount of time. You've grown in certain ways. She's grown in certain ways. And you guys need time to really figure out if those new ways that you're coming to each other are going to actually benefit each other long term even because you guys have been apart, which means whatever the breakup happened, you guys broke up for some reason. So you got to figure that stuff out also. But yeah, she's essentially a new person. So you can't go into this thinking, well, I knew her for, for years ago and we did it for four years. So we can just jump on ground one. No, you can't. You need time to reconnect. You need time to figure out what, what happened the last time so that won't happen again. And you guys living together isn't going to make that happen any faster. On top of, like I said, she suggested it because she's probably thinking, like most women do, like the more time we spend together, the more that we're going to be able to bond and get close. And this is a this is an example of like a thing that women oftentimes don't understand is that they need time away from you to actually be attracted to you. 
And this is too big of a step early on for a relationship that's only a month old. Yes, again, you dated years ago, but this is this new relationship is only a month old. So I'm already against the idea of living together prior to marriage. But if you were going to do that, it would be at least once you've known the person for a good amount of time and dated them for longer than a month. You've been with them for a month. So at, at minimum, at minimum, because I don't recommend you even live together with this person before you're married to them, but at least a year of dating before you decide, that gives you enough time to really analyze them, spend time with them, see if your morals and values match up together, see if you guys are really a better match this time versus the last time you were together. Because as you've said, you've sold your house and now she's probably having second thoughts but doesn't want to tell you that and now you're out in the cold. And that's not fair to you, but you know, you decided to make that step even though it's only been a month. So what my suggestion would be is she's put this thing out there that she thought she wanted to do. Spoiler alert, she doesn't. And you as a guy <clears throat> need to be better aware of when women are giving you suggestions of things that are actually going to be to her detriment and also to your detriment. And you need to go to her and say, hey, you know what? <clears throat> I, I think that, you know, maybe we're rushing into this. And I think we need a little bit more time before we make that step of living together. So why don't I just get my own place and we can still date each other and just kind of see how that goes first before we make this big step. Because I know we've dated in the past and I know you you were really excited about us moving in together, but I just, I'm just i just feeling like, you know, maybe we need to do more to make sure that this isn't going to be another breakup and that we need time to really just date each other first and also have time to go home to ourselves and think about things and do whatever versus rushing into this. And yes, you might think she's going to fight you on this. How dare you? Blah, blah, blah. But dude, she's already pulling away, which means that she's made a decision that she's actually thinking is a bad idea. And this, by the way, is also why you as the guy are supposed to be the one leading the relationship. Right now, this is ind indicative of your trying to give her the keys to the relationship. You're allowing her to wear the pants and make these decisions. And you can see what happens when you're allowing the woman in the situation to make these kind of relationship decisions and to lead the relationship because, and this is no, this is no, um, like, I'm not trying to like this woman in any super way because I think women are great at, at making certain decisions and, you know, they're really smart at times and can be analytical, but sometimes they make decisions based on feeling. And when those feelings change, they suddenly want to change up. Men are a lot better at being able to make decisions and then stick with that regardless of how they feel about it because they know what's in the best interest of the whole. So she made the decision, you guys should live together, and now she's having second thoughts about it. This is not a good decision that she made, but it's your fault for saying yes to it in the first place. And you have to learn to be able to hear what a woman's saying sometimes and analyze it in the correct manner to where you recognize it's a bad idea and say, no, I know you're excited about this thing, but no. I know you want to be together and you know spend more time together, and we can do that in a dating capacity, but living together right now, no. And again, you're risking your future happiness and your future chances of this working out long-term by living together this early on. So I already say it's a bad idea. I, I, uh, basically she's made the decision and now she's feeling antsy about it. So I would pull that decision away from her, say, Hey, you know what? I'm feeling like this is too soon. I'm feeling that we need to spend more time together before we get into, before we do the whole move together step. And then I take the pull away and then I find a new place to live. I'm sorry you sold your house. It's it's a lesson learned. Don't make the decision to live with the woman until you get married until you're talking marriage or until at the very least her feelings are more solidified. And uh hopefully that helps. So uh keep us posted. Let us see how it uh, tell us how it goes and let us know what the decision ultimately was. But like, this is this is a bad idea, dude. Like if she's already started to pull away on the and, and this isn't to say you need to necessarily pull out of the relationship altogether, it does mean you need to slow things down because she's making decisions that are making you guys move too fast and she's not aware that she's doing that and it's causing her to lose attraction. So you need to go back to seeing her once or twice a week and let the let the, her feelings naturally develop. So even if she's overexcited, you keep it at that pace of, you know, once or twice a week until it gets a little bit more serious than maybe three times a week. But like, dude, don't, don't, I'm telling you, living together right now, this is, this is not a good idea. That's just my opinion. So maybe people can leave comments in the chats and let, let us know your experience of, you know, living together with somebody and how it went, but I, I wouldn't do it. So hopefully that helps out. Clearly I'm in bed still. So this is, this is enough of an important uh, comment left to where I had to do a video about it. And for the rest of you, 
This is an example of a situation that if you're not aware of how dating should function and how women operate, could actually cause you to make the wrong decision that can cause you to lose a woman. And I don't want you to do that. So that's why I'm opening up my Introvert Dating Success Academy on November 1st. This is going to be like the Netflix of dating advice where you'll have access to hundreds of hours of various things that'll teach you aspects of the dating game that are important. Things like how do women get attracted and why wouldn't they want to live to get, why is it a bad idea to actually live to, together with a woman before you get married to them? And like how to attract them, how to text them, what kind of dates to take them on, what kind of conversations to have, what things to negotiate before you get into a relationship with the woman, how to date, do online dating, how to do a wide variety of things that are going to be important to getting women attracted to you and then keeping that attraction. If that's something that interests you, sign up for the waitlist now at introvertdatingsuccess.com. When you do, you'll get a free PDF called the Girlfriend Roadmap Checklist, which will lay out a three-month blueprint on what you should be doing during that time to go from just dating her to landing in a relationship. And then the the uh, the membership program is going to fill in a lot of gaps about what to do during that time and then how to make it last beyond that three months. So again, get that PDF by and sign up for the waitlist at introvertdatingsuccess.com. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Like I said, I got a busy, busy, busy day ahead of me today. But I just wanted to make sure that I was able to answer this guy's question. And by the way, when you join the uh, Introvert Dating Success Membership Academy, you can answer me, you can ask me like any question at any time and I will happily answer it to you as quickly as I possibly can because you're, you're part of the membership thing. So you'll have instant access to me and it'll be a lot easier and a lot faster to get these kind of answers, okay? But anyway, I'm Harry Wilmington. Thanks for watching and I'll check you guys out on the next one. I'm out. Peace. This episode is brought to you by the Introvert Dating Success Membership Academy, opening on November 1st. Join the waitlist and get your free PDF, The Girlfriend Roadmap Checklist, at introvertdatingsuccess.com. Thanks for listening to the Introvert Dating Success Podcast. Visit us at introvertdatingsuccess.com for more great tips on attracting women using your natural introvert charm. Oh, yeah.